Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and thanks for viewing this YouTube fly tying tutorial for the squimp. Though I come from a really Italian family, I can guarantee you that at our annual Feast of the Seven Fishes dinner, we have never served squimp before, though I'm sure a few of my relatives would love to try. Quite honestly, this species doesn't exist, but luckily there was a creative fly tire out there that decided to combine a squid and a shrimp. And we can thank that individual because this is a fly that just quite honestly works. I'm basically a casual saltwater fly fisherman, meaning that I don't fish in the salt as much as I'd like, but I don't live close by to any, thus I have to really just pick my days when I can. More importantly, that relates to my fly boxes because when you look through them, I basically just have them full of the staples. We're talking clousers, deceivers, and crab patterns. Whenever I decide on a location or destination, I call ahead to the local fly shops, check out online, and figure out what additional patterns to add to those staples. But the squimp now is turning into one of those staple flies. It has lots of great characteristics, but more importantly, it's easy to fish. What that means is you can literally simply cast this fly out and either utilize a fast or a slow retrieve, and it works. You can also let this fly just hang out there, let it sit, tease it a little bit, and attempt to elicit a strike from that fish you're chasing. Whenever we look at it from a fly tying perspective, the fly gets better. It's really easy to tie and it's very simple to modify. By modify, I mean that we can change the materials quite easily and more importantly, we can change the color. I'm really going to encourage you to check into the latter because what I've learned about saltwater fly fishing over the years is that many locations, many of these destinations almost have a certain color that will trigger a strike from a fish. I really am encouraging you to try to figure out what that color might be where you're traveling to and incorporate that into this squimp pattern. By the way, I'm talking a lot about saltwater fly fishing. For all of you freshwater fly fishermen out there as well, take a good look at this fly and then imagine it with crayfish colors. It works, trust me. So with all of that said, I'm going to show you a finished look at the fly list all the tying materials for it, and then go through all the procedures for this great fly, the squimp. Okay, in my Staunfield Cayman Vice, I have a hook from Allen Fly Fishing. This is one of their saltwater hooks. It's their SW002. It's a really great model number. It is a barbed hook, but I've already debarbed it. I'm tying this squimp in a size 6. I'll tie it a little bit smaller than that, though I really do prefer to use the size 6 and larger. For the thread, I'm going with some 6 aught tan. This is from Uni. Whenever I'm tying that crayfish pattern that I was talking about, I like this olive done from Uni. It's another great color that they have. I'm going to just build up a, a nice little base. I'm going to tie the whole way back to almost where the bar would be, but just a little bit in front of that. At that point, I'm going to add a four millimeter dumbbell. This is one with red eyes. I just love the look of, of these. I just think they're just a, just a wonderful um, component. I'm going to figure eight those and do what I call a little helicopter style just to pull all those thread wraps tight. If you can wiggle this with your finger and it really moves around a lot, then I recommend just securing your thread, coming back, getting some a little bit more aggressive of, of wraps, and then helicoptering again. Get some figure eights in there and everything will be locked in place. Now this is a heavier dumbbell. Don't be afraid to also experiment with bead chain eyes. They work really well too. For this tailing material, and I'm going to call it tail just for the location of the tie-in, I might grab a, a clump of tail from a foxtail. This is a really great material. I don't want too big of a clump. So I just want a nice small amount. For the length of this, I'm actually going to hold it up and I want to measure it from the bend the whole way to the eye. I'll transfer it, and that's my tie-in point. Now you can snip it there if you'd like. I like to kind of go a little bit more clouser style, bring it up in front of those eyes, secure it with a few wraps, 
build up a little bit of a body, and then work back. As I'm cutting, I want to tell you that foxtail is just a wonderful material. It has so much breathability in the water. It's a really easy material to work with, and this color is just excellent whenever we're trying to really hit this imitation. There are lots of other materials out there that tires use for this. There are a ton that really prefer to use craft fur. It's a very cheap material, it's easy to find, and it has lots of movement in the water as well. Also, don't be afraid to experiment a little bit with bucktail. It works so well in so many patterns, and it will on this one too. The next material that we're going to tie in are going to be the legs. I'm going to be using these silly legs. There are lots of different colors of these legs that we can use. <coughs> Excuse me. Chartreuse silver. Great color on this. We have this lovely fluorescent pink, it's a bard. If I want to switch to that crayfish style, we have some crawdad pumpkin flake. Here's olive, which I'll show you a fly that I've tied with this olive bard. And the color I'm going to be using is going to be this clear slash pearl silver flake. Whenever you purchase these, they come in a long strip like this. I'm showing you just a portion. And I'm going to recommend just tearing one off. So we're going to tear it off the top and the bottom. And for my tie-in, I really want it approximately the same length as that tail section. So my tie-in the side facing you, I don't have to make any cut there. And then I'm going to take this longer piece and just wrap it around and lock it in on my side. That's it. At that point, I can make sure they're both the same length. Make a snip. Looks like the edge of that one, or the end is just a little messed up. And now I have my, my two back ones just cut the length. I have another section that I can use on a later fly. All right, the body is another area that you can really just go crazy with materials. <clears throat> a lot of individuals use this micro polar chenille. This scud olive gray is just a wonderful color. <coughs> I'm sorry. A lot of individuals use dubbed bodies. And I really like this sparkle material from Sparkling Willy Flies. There's a lot of colors that he sells in this. The two that I recommend are tan, which is this one that you're seeing right now, and white. I'm actually going to tie the white for this pattern. I think it just has a great look to it. I'm actually going to tie in the entire length. Just lock it in place. We can get our thread out of there. Now, if you have a rotary vise, you can absolutely use the rotary function and advance this forward. I do, but I know a lot of you don't, so I won't use that and tease you. So I'm just going to cut this somewhere around a three and a half, four inch length. Whenever I wind it forward, you really don't have to be too careful with this. If you want to bring it and figure it around the eyes, you can. If you're just trying to cover up those, um, those thread wraps or that the color of the fox, it's completely your choice. My only recommendation will be, don't let this get too close to the eye. I really am going to encourage you to stay really far back from that eye. We don't want to crowd it. We have a couple other materials. And to further imitate this pattern, I really don't feel that we have a need to have all this excess fiber on top. Now, the top right now is going to be the bottom in the water. Because of the, the way that we've tied in these eyes, this fly is actually going to ride hook point up, so it's going to invert itself in the water. Having all this excess flash on top is really not going to be helpful. So I'm just going to take my scissors and just give it a quick once over. Now, if any of these fibers get pushed up again as you finish the fly, I would really recommend cutting them one more time. Now, keep that in mind that because this is going to be riding hook point up, we're going to have to flip our hook. Again, if you have a rotary vise, you can simply just rotate it and have it up. Just for the sake of knowing that many of you may not, I'm just going to invert my fly. We only have two more additional materials. 
But these are two that you're already familiar with. The first is going to be the return to this foxtail. I'm going to grab a similar size pinch. <coughs> I'm going to roll it together in my fingers. I want this to be a longer length though. I'm going to have this extend the whole way from my tie-in point to the end of the back section. So once I have that basically lined up, so these tips that are now in my hand are lined up with the tips that we previously tied in, then I'll lock them in. I'll secure them at the front. And as I secure them, I was always wrapping back away from that hook eye. We don't want to crowd that tie off location. And then I'm going to go over everything with my thread because I know I'm getting really close to finishing this. So I want to keep everything clean up there. And then finally, we're going to return to these silly legs. This time I'm going to pull off two. The one on your side is going to extend the whole way back to where the, the tip of the first one was tied in. So I'm going to lock that going the whole way back there. And the same with the, side, the one on my side. I just want to make it so tips are pretty much lined up. Now I have these two that are coming off the front. I don't want them to be super long. A lot of tires will leave this really long so that when it bends back, it's the same length. I really don't feel that there's a need to do that. So I might cut them off just a, a hair over one inch. I do want them coming forward in that V formation. Once they are where I want them, I'm just gonna pinch them up a little bit, get one thread wrap in front, I may go immediately into my whip finish. And secure everything. Now I really like putting Sally Hansen hard as nails at this point to, to make sure that those thread wraps are locked in place. But whenever I'm using this um, foxtail, that Sally Hansen will just real, get absorbed quickly into those. So after I'm done with this video, I'm going to take my bodkin and I'm going to apply the head cement. Well, at this point, we are now finished with our squimp fly. Let me take it out of the vise, move it over so you can see it. This is just a really cool pattern. Very simple to tie, as you can tell. And whenever this gets wet, it is just absolutely gorgeous in the water. There's lots of coloration. There's lots of flash in it, and this foxtail really just will move and undulate with the current. Whenever you're stripping this fly back, you'll also get a lot of movement. Now, I previously had kind of alluded to the fact that you can tie other variations, including some crayfish-looking patterns. Here's one that I've tied that has the dark legs. Same fibers for that foxtail, but for the body, I used a different material. I used some olive uni mohair. This is another great product to tie whenever you're, whenever you're tying the bodies. They have lots of different colors to this. There's no flash, but it literally just ties in and then you wind it forward. It's something else I really encourage you to, you, I really encourage you to check out because it's just an easy product to use. Well, with all of that said, I really hope that you enjoyed this fly tying tutorial for the squimp. If you'd like to view more of my YouTube fly tying tutorials, please check those out at troutandfeather.com. Also, thanks go out to Allen Fly Fishing for, their use, uh, for the use of their SW002 saltwater hook. You can find that hook and many others at allenflyfishing.com. And most importantly, thank you goes out to all of you for viewing this YouTube fly tying tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them directly on this YouTube page. Or as always, you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. Thanks everyone for viewing this YouTube fly tying tutorial for the squimp, a great saltwater slash crayfish pattern.